Hi, this is Joe from Prep Agent, here with my friend James Turner, who just passed the exam in Florida, and he wrote down some notes to share with everybody so they could have the same success that he did. So James, take it away. First, I want to say it's a pleasure to talk to the legend and the person who has helped, I know, so many people pass their test, but um, yes. So I wrote down a few things for, you know, because a lot of people, they get nervous, and the first thing is just relax. It's, it's really, it's not that big of a deal. Usually the, the test doesn't cost that much. So I mean, it's not like it's the end of the world if you fail. I mean, go in there positive. You have enough to worry about. Don't worry about, you know, stressing yourself out and psyching yourself out before you even take the test. So um, the number one thing that I could probably say before you take your test is just watch YouTube videos. There's, I think, 47 of your one-on-one -on -one webinars, and I've watched all 47 of them probably a bunch and have it playing like when you're driving to work when you're cleaning the house things like that just have it playing in the background because you'll retain that information from hearing it over and over and over again even if you're not reading a book because you can't read a book eight hours a day um know the sections that are important don't spend all day worrying about zoning when it's one percent at least on the florida test it's one percent and mortgages are nine percent or contracts is twelve percent so focus on the ones that have the most weight. Um, and while you're taking your, whatever class you're in, you know, when you take your practice exams, if you miss a question, write it down. Every, every one you miss, write it down. And before you walk in the test, what I did in the parking lot, I read every single question that I had missed during my practice and, and things like that. So it was all fresh. Um, and those were probably the biggest things that helped me before the test. And then there's a few things I have during the test we can go over if you like. Um, sure, let's hear it. I love that you mentioned writing it down because I'm a big believer that you got to do something active. If you just stare at it and people think it sinks in, you'll zone out because this stuff is boring. But that active motion of writing it down kind of forces you to pay attention, which is good. Well, not only that, but if you, if you get a question, even if you guess on it, but if you get the question right, you understand the concept enough that you're going to probably get it right again on the test. Versus if you miss something, and there was some things I noticed that I wrote down and I missed it again. So then I would put a star because that means, okay, twice now I've missed the same concept. Obviously, I need to take and have this fresh in my mind before I go in and I take the test. Um, and then during the test, the biggest thing that I could say probably is um, when you're going through the test, any of the, te any of the questions that you're not 100% sure on, mark it as review. Um, and then go through the whole market as review or any math test uh, question that's going to take a long time. Just mark it as review. Get through as many as you can that you know the answer to. And then this way, when you get done, you kind of have an idea. Like, for example, I had 28 questions that I had marked for review when I finished my exam. So I knew that I was already pretty close to passing, you know, with the 75 because there was 28 that I had questions on. It, it all doesn't allow you to get um, discouraged. Like let's say you get hung up on a math question and you're like, oh, I can't believe I don't know this one. And then you start getting towards the end, you're gonna start getting discouraged. When I was going through the test, I was already celebrating in my head that I passed because I was like, oh, these are so easy. I mean, I'm already on 40 and I'm going through them no problem. That was because I was taking all the hard ones and just throwing them as mark for review. Then when I got to the end and had to mark for review, I was like, okay, hopefully I do pass. <laughs> and, and luckily, you know, I did, I passed the first time. Um, thing too is when you're on math questions or anything where it gives you like the weekly of something, but it asks for the annually, write it down. So write down, you know, 450 weekly, 12,000 yearly and write that yearly and weekly. So when you're looking at the, the problem, you remember, oh, I got to change this to, to, annually or I got to change. That comes it. up a lot with gross rent multipliers. That's a good point. So they do the yeah. monthly and annual and they try and throw you off with that. Yeah. So I, at Pearson View, which is where I took it, they actually had like little dry erase uh, things. So you could just write and, um, and I would write, you know, weekly acres and next to the number. So this way I, re I would know. And a lot of times too, especially like on the, um, the mills rate questions, a lot of the math questions will have one of the answers actually as an answer. So they might have the, the city and county as one answer and then the school as another answer. 
but they want the total and that total is actually a third answer and you can almost use that to kind of check your math like yep that's the county yep that's the school add those together and here's the total and you got the correct answer so um but the biggest thing and i actually heard it on one of your webinars that really just changed my whole perspective on the exam is the point of the test is to protect the consumers. You're not going to have a question where you're going to do something negatively to the client. Most likely that's not going to be the answer. And when I changed my thinking about it as what would protect the consumer the most, not me as the agent, then it really helped me kind of weed out some of the answers that I knew wasn't going to be correct. And that was probably besides watching all your videos. I mean, I literally watched, you watched all your videos. I, I, I said that did. a long time ago. I haven't Holy said that in a while, but now I'm going to say it again in my new videos for sure. Because that, that was a while back when I said that. Yeah. I mean, I literally watched him driving when I fell asleep. I'd have headphones in until I fell asleep. Watch him while driving and then you fell asleep. No, no, <laughs> no. While I was, <laughs> I was like, there's a lot wrong with that sentence. <laughs> yeah, no, but while you have it, you know, just playing, you know, have it playing in on your phone in the car. I mean, don't obviously sit there and take yeah, notes yeah. while you're driving, but just, of course. just by having that information, I was able, I listened to like probably six to eight hours of video a day, just going, you know, just, I always had it on, on play. Um, but when you change it, I mean, there's not going to be an answer that's like the buyer, decided not to, to purchase a property, what should you do? Take half the commission and give the, give the, the earnest money back. Like, that's not going to be an answer. Would, if you were the buyer, would you want that to happen to you? No. And, and the whole point is to, and you even said it, it's not going to, they're not going to teach you like how to sue your buyer. Like, it's not going to teach you things like that because it's about protecting the consumer. And once I flipped my mindset and started looking at questions like that, things actually became a whole lot easier. That, that's probably like my biggest two tips. Watch videos and protect the consumer. It's funny when people think like that, they see more how the test is relevant. And of course, there's things that are irrelevant what you actually do. But you know how people always complain like, oh, it's not relevant what you're actually going to do. Yeah. But when you change your mindset like that, you start to see like, oh, okay. You know, now I see why they're asking me about this. You know, now I see why they're drilling about this because they're not drilling me about the everyday they're trying to make me ready for that circumstance when the consumer is in jeopardy, whenever yeah. that comes up. And, and I actually think there is a lot that is relevant, but I think the difference is, is if that person owns real estate already or not, because like for me, I have rental properties. So there was a lot of things about rental properties that were intriguing to me that I wanted to learn from my own personal, you know, knowledge of knowing Versus someone who maybe rents an apartment, does, never bought a house and doesn't have any rental properties. There may be a lot of things that's just like, oh, this isn't relevant. I'm never going to need this. But if you have real estate, there will be a lot of things that you're going to come across that, you know, hopefully you want to know just for your, your own personal knowledge, not just for being an agent. Well, my honest opinion about it is I'd say a third is very relevant whether people like it or not, like you should know how big an acre is. You should know what a listing is. If you're going to mm -hmm. practice real estate, a third is probably only relevant in certain situations. And then a third, it's like, Oh, well just know it. You got to pass, suck it up. Yeah. You know, <laughs> it's yeah. like, I get it. It's not, That's relevant anything. Deal I mean, I'm getting my bachelor's degree right now and I'm learning a bunch of stuff that, you know, I just needed to pass the test and, you know, and move on. And sometimes that's just what you got to do. Right. And I love that attitude more than anything. It's like, it's what you got to do. The other mm -hmm. day, there's a lot of people that are real estate license and this forms a barrier of entry because if you're not willing to put in the effort to get past this, then, you know, do you deserve to have a real estate license? I don't know because I don't know that they should just be giving a real estate license to anybody. I mean, if you want to be a lawyer, you got to go to law school. Exactly. They're just asking you to pass a test that yes, has some annoying information, but it's a barrier of entry. And as you practice real estate, you know, as you know, from all your rental properties, it's a constant process of researching information. Yeah, and so, the more you know, I mean, in anything in life, the more you know, the better off you're going to be. Yeah, and a lot of the information is going to apply to that one situation and never be applicable again. Mm -hmm. so, but that one time that it saves you, then you're going to, you know, just like all the acronyms and stuff for the, the, the OOE rule and, and things like that, like you, you're going to, you're going to, it might sound silly, but it, when you use it, it's not that silly. 
in the situational one, so I said the ones that everybody should know is like Acre, what a listing is, gross rent multiplier. Like you've probably come across gross rent multipliers dealing with rental properties. The stuff that's a little more situational would be stuff like lease pendants, like a lawsuit pending. Like most people don't deal with it, but when you do deal with it, you'll be happy you know what it is when that word comes across your desk. Mm -hmm. And things like a 1031 exchange, not everybody deals with it, but it can come across your plate. So, and then of course there's stuff like freehold estate, which you'll probably never come across. You know, it's just definitions yeah. or principle of substitution, you know, but you know, that's what it is. But it's anyway, about put it, it's about putting in the effort, you know, you're getting a license that has a significant impact on someone else's life, you know, just like a doctor or a lawyer. And you kind of need to put that work in to earn that license. And I think by showing that type of dedication, that also puts you on the right foot. I agree. Frankly, if it was up to me, I'd probably make it more strict, which would be counterproductive to my business. But, you know, nobody's changing based upon this video anyway. But other things like being an appraiser is much more strict mm -hmm. than being a real estate agent. There's very few licenses where you could has such a low barrier of entry, but for us, it's really just the exams and these required courses where you have such potential income waiting for you. Yeah. Well, I don't know if I'd want to make it harder. I mean, Florida already has, they say it's 51% pass rate. Uh, so. But you think about how on, many agents are in Florida and how yeah. many agents you said, you know, it would have been nice if there was a process to weed some of these people out. Like I get so, that it's hard in Florida, but sometimes I think, you know what? maybe they should make these people take the exam every five years, you know, kind of, yeah. but they're not going to do that today. So for now, <laughs> you know, just get through this exam and take advantage of the fact of that. It's not that hard to get into the business. If you just study and do what you said, and then people could start practicing real estate. And that's my bigger point, not to yeah. lobby the government to make it harder to, to pass the exam, but to make everybody realize that the grand scheme of it, this isn't that big of a barrier entry, so suck it up. Take some of the notes from what you were saying before, pass the exam, and start making money, you know, and pursuing your dreams. And keep playing the videos even after you pass the test. Like I still plan, I'm probably not going to do six hours a day, but at least keep the, the videos and, and, and the content relevant, you know, while you're finding a broker and things like that because just by listening, that information just stays relevant because if you, if you just turn everything off, and then a couple months you get a client and they ask for a certain thing, be like, uh, you know, just keep the, keep the information relevant. Yeah. Well, thank you so much. I appreciate it. And as your career progresses, you will provide me links to whatever you're doing, yes. which I'll put in the show notes below. And with that being said, this is John, excuse me, James, James Turner <laughs> in Florida. All right. With Joe from prep agent. And thank you so much. I really do appreciate on behalf of everyone that watches your videos. I hope you know how much this content really helps us. I do appreciate that because this is a big labor of love. This, mm -hmm. this was not easy to put together. So I appreciate that. Thank you. Thank you. Bye guys. Bye.